Hello, this is Tim from Vintage RC Garage. This video will be the complete teardown of my Tamiya Frog Queen project kit number 5841 in trim normal time. I'll provide the rebuild and the time lapse in another video. I hope you like it. This particular frog I bought in 2021 along with three other frogs. Each one was in various forms of disrepair. What I usually do when I do a restore is to buy multiple cars and then pull the best part off each one to rebuild my queen. Then I finish off and sell all the leftover builds. This one did have some wear and tear, but luckily I also had a large lot of new old stock frog parts I could substitute during my rebuild. Alrighty then, let's get cracking on this teardown. First things first, let's get started with the body shell. One by one, I removed the hex nuts holding on each wheel. The tires were in used but good condition. On the rear, watch out for the hub pins falling out since they easily get lost. The Frog is one of a few Tamiya models that have a dual antenna setup. Not only do they look cool, but they also provide a bit of body scratch protection when you flip over. This one had some decent wire organization, so a quick snip of the zip ties and things loosen right up. Keep an eye on the small plastic spacers underneath the speed controller when you take it off since they do like to run away. The ceramic heat sink at first looks like it's banged up but the instructions actually ask you to bend the terminals when setting it up so it looks a bit off when you disassemble it but that is how it's supposed to be. After a quick disassemble of the receiver it's on to the rear shocks. The frog has some cool looking cylinders that are positioned horizontal, unlike most setups. Some say this rear facing position is how the frog actually got its name. The bumper is the most exposed plastic part on the chassis. I have seen these parts get broken during shipping, so please take them off if you're going to ship one. The skid plate really does take a beating. It's no wonder that the frog skid plate is made from metal. The Frog uses a standard 540 motor, which is an upgrade to the other entry buggies of the era, like the Grasshopper. It comes off easily with two screws. The entire rear assembly is secured to the space frame with a unique rear arm stopper that surrounds the gearbox and then screws into the chassis. A couple of interior screws and the entire rear assembly can be removed. I'll save that disassembly for a little later. For an entry level buggy, the front assembly is rather complicated and hard to work with. The front suspension arms are very difficult to get at, the box wrench doesn't have clearance so I used a pair of pliers to hold the nuts while unscrewing. The suspension arms are secured to the front mount with radius arm bars. Before I tackle the rest of the chassis, I need to extract the servos from the chassis. The servo setup is one of the unique aspects of the ORV chassis design. There are a number of hidden screws that secure the space frame together. The speed controller mount provides excellent stabilization as well as other crossbars that slide and lock into position. The front suspension consists of a spring stuck into the frame to provide resistance to the arms as they move up and down. This doesn't provide much relief while running. Once the arm mounts are removed, the chassis is almost two pieces. Just a couple more screws and the halves come apart. The steering arms are held in place with two step screws. The metal parts are held together with a hex screw, which is an uncommon screw type for a Tamiya. Now, moving on to the rear assembly. This frog had an aftermarket stabilizer attached, so we're moving that first. I'm not sure if that will go back on during the rebuild. The axle has the ORV rubber boot covered axles. Rinse and repeat, the same on the other side. The Frog is a very nostalgic to me a kit. Since it was an entry level buggy, there were lots and lots of them floating around neighborhoods in the 80s. You could find plenty of beat up specimens floating around eBay. One thing I really don't like about the ORV gearbox aesthetics is that the screws are way too long. Even after you attach the nut, the screw sticks out way too far. The inside of the, this gearbox has nice gunked up gears, so much that even the spacers were stuck in place. 
I wiped as much of the grease off as possible to avoid making everything else really greasy. The shock still had some oil left inside. Make sure that you have a rag handy during disassembly so that you can dump it out without getting it everywhere. I find the easiest way to get them apart is to compress the spring and grab the inner nut with a pair of pliers. Then insert your Allen wrench to unscrew the shock and so everything else just slides out. Repeat the same with the other shock. Okay, so the wheels are a big pain in the butt in my opinion. There are five really small screws and nuts that have to be undone. Those screws keep the three-piece rim set up together. The rear wheels have a much larger width in the front. Getting the rims out of the tire is not too bad, but getting them back in is a whole nother ballgame. Up last is the body shell. This one had some peeling paint and also wasn't done in box art color, so I needed to strip it and start over. Finish it off by removing the power switch and the other accessories like the Casey headlights and the tail wing. So there you go, everything all stripped apart. The next step in the teardown process is to give each and every part a good degreasing. I like to keep parts separated by type so the cleaning and reassembly go much smoother. I start with my standard crud cutter cleaning. Start by filling a bin with full concentration for the metal parts, half and half for the plastic parts. Give everything a good agitation and don't be shy about letting it sit for some time. I have started leaving parts soaking for a few hours with a few periodic agitations. Rinse everything with some clear water and then pat dry. Make sure you give it plenty of time to dry out. Here is where I put everything back into organized bins to store everything for the rebuild. The story behind this project's body shell turned into a saga. I spent countless hours stripping the original shell and tail wing so I could repaint them. After I finished all the new paint spraying and pulled off the overspray tape, I saw that the black from the roll bar had bled into the white. The paint pen I used was not Tamiya and the different paint types did not agree with each other. It was crushed. So many wasted hours. I ended up finding another vintage shell set on eBay. This one had been cut out and had some black paint on it, but otherwise it was nearly new in box condition. This shell also turned out to be an adventure of its own. I will save you much of the pain, but I started with some DOT3 brake fluid. This instantly removed the silver, but did very little on the black. As always, I submerged parts of the areas I was stripping in fluid and then covered the soaked paper towels on top. Some light toothbrushing, a number of overnight soaks, yet in the end, only a little progress was really made. Using Q-tips and some Tamiya body cleaner is a great technique for getting the tough to reach areas clean. For chapter two of this body shell stripping, I upped my game to DOT4 brake fluid. I had not used DOT4 before, but had heard to be more cautious with the soaks. In the end, I did do a few overnight soaks and it definitely did work better, but it still wasn't easy. The process did leave hazing, although I think that was from the brushing because the brake fluid was everywhere, but only the areas I tried to remove paint from with a toothbrush actually got hazy. I finished this paint stripping with many hours of Q-tips and body cleaner, but eventually it came clean. I really hate stripping body shells. I ended up using almost an entire box of Q-tips and an entire bottle of body cleaner. Thanks for watching the teardown of my Tamiya Frog 5841 Shelf Queen project. Stay tuned for the next part of this video where I will do the complete build. Subscribe to my channel and catch all my exciting new content. See you next time.